this is Cognos Paul. Today we're going to be talking about macro prompts. Macros at the most basic level allow you to modify query expressions before the query is sent to the database. Most often you use it as filters, but today we're going to be using it to modify items in the cross tab itself. Confused? Don't worry. Everything will be clear by the end. So today we're going to be working with the Bottle Manufacturing Data Module, which is included in the Cognos 11.2 samples. The report that we're working on today is showing us machine stops by plant. Obviously for a manufacturer, it's very important that all of the machines work as efficiently and as quickly as possible. So any stops means that the company is losing money. Obviously this is fake, but I have worked in companies where we've had issues like this in the past. And reports like this will show us which plants have the most issues. Looking at this, I can immediately see that plant three is a problem, but let's uh, modify the report to the customer's requirements. Right now, the customer wants something very simple. They want to sort the plant based on whatever criteria they want. They might want plan stop, small stop. So let's add that right now. To begin with, we're going to add a new table. Let's make it two columns by five rows. And we click OK. And we'll add the sort item. And then we will add prompting value prompt. Let's call it sort item, finish. And what we'll do is we will add static choices to match what we have in here. So we have planned stop. We have small stop. We have unplanned stop. And finally, we have total stop. Okay. And let's make this auto submit. Now, this alone isn't going to help us too much. We have to modify the cross tab itself. So how can we do that? We're going to drag in a query calculation to the right of total stop, and we will add our macro. Prompt sort item token. And we'll call this sort item. So this by itself is not going to work because when we get a token, the value total stop is going to be passed to the expression. But total stop isn't a valid expression in Cognos. If we wanted to reference one of these items, let's see what we would need. Drag that in. We would need brackets. So we're going to wrap the prompt function in the SB function. And that will wrap anything that's passed to the prompt with square brackets. Let's take a look. Ooh, total stop. There we go. We're going to go back to page design and run the report. Change that. Plan stop. Small stop. Good. It's matching what we have. So now we can go into the plant, click on sorting, sort by that. Let's make sure that the aggregation is set to total because sometimes Cognos can be a little touchy if not everything, if everything isn't set up perfectly. So we'll try this again. Sort item. Beautiful. And because we are sorting by the sort item, we don't actually need it to be in the layout. 
Let's try it again. Total stop. Unplanned stop. Plan stop. Wow. Plant three. Really problematic. They have three planned stops and 2,100 unplanned stops. Ah, that's, that's not good. So this does exactly what the client wants. Well, not exactly. They actually want to be able to see the top three. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new query calculation. And we're going to do top count plants three by the sort item. Let's call this top count. Click OK. And we'll get rid of the plant. And let's see if it still works. Ooh, what happened here? It would help if I spelled it correctly, wouldn't it? There we go. Beautiful. Total stops, plants 3, 8, and 2. Plan stop, plant 2, 7, and 8. That looks beautiful. But it's not perfect because the client actually wants to control the number of uh, visible items. All right. So let's add this here. Count number. And we will add a text box prompt to here. We'll call this count. We will make this numbers only. We will default to three. Okay. But because text box prompts can't have auto submit, so let's remove the auto submit from here. And we will add a prompt button down here. We'll call this finish. And in here, in the top count expression, we're going to change the three into another prompt, integer. Let's make sure it still works. Count three. Let's change that to five now. Beautiful. And we can still change the sort item. Beautiful. But it's still not what they want. Now they're going to add a much more complicated twist. They want to choose if they want to see the top count or the bottom count. There are a few ways that we could do this. The easiest way might be to create two separate data items, one top count, one bottom count, and then use a render variable to choose which cross tab we're going to look at. Render variable or a conditional block, those would both work. But the point of this video is to talk about macros, not variables. So let's add a top or bottom prompt. And we will add a value prompt to here. Let's call this top or bottom. And we're going to add static choice. Let's add top, top. And we're going to add bottom, bottom. We will make this default to top. Let's make this a radio. Beautiful. And now in here, we can actually change this into a prompt itself. So we're getting rid of top inside of top count. And we're replacing that with top or bottom token, close the macro, and remember what I was saying before. The token prompt is going to get the value and just return that to the expression without anything. So if it gets top, well, that'll be top count. And if it gets bottom, 
That'll just be bottom count. Both are valid functions. Let's make sure this works. We run the report. And we can see top, still good. Let's change this to unplanned and five. Beautiful. Now we'll do bottom. Whoa, that was unexpected. Uh, I'm going to use the parameter editor and see why it's not working. Oh, well, that's embarrassing. I've misspelled bottom. Let's fix that in here and finish and run. Okay, so the report failed, and that was because, like before, I had misspelled something fairly basic. Uh, so we'll go back to here. We'll change this to bottom. Well, that was embarrassing. Thank goodness I had the parameter editor to help me figure out what was going wrong. So we'll rerun the report. Bottom. Let's do unplanned stops five. Beautiful. All right. So now let's clean this up a bit. We're going to change this into report expression. Let's add in here the sort item. So this will be unplanned stop, total stop. Let's call this machine space total stop plus by plant. Uh, let's also add in, so this would be top or bottom space top, add a plus there, top three machine, let's add an S there, machine stops by plant. Let's see if that still works or if I had uh, misspelled something else. It does happen. Top three machine total stops by plant. Let's do five bottom, bottom five machine plan stops by plant. Beautiful. Now let's talk about this. This saved my life here and it actually rescued the video from something incredibly embarrassing. Now you might be asking, what is this beautiful, awesome tool? Well, this is actually something that I wrote called Cogbox. And we have a number of different tools in here. This is the one that I used, Parameter Editor. It lets you see the active parameters in a report. Really, really useful for when you're developing a report. So I'm going to copy this, go back to the report authoring screen, and go back into here, and load it. Now when I run the report again, it will use exactly the parameters that I had selected. So this would be very helpful in debugging certain reports. And the best thing about this is it's completely free and you can download it from pmsquare.com slash cogbox. To be fair, I wrote it and I'm free to advertise my own stuff in my own videos. So I'm not feeling at all self-conscious about that. So that's it for today. If you have any questions about this video or Cogbox or maintaining an awesome beard, please feel free to drop me a line. Contact us, button's right down here. Looking forward to hearing from you.